Okay, so uh, I'm gonna get started. Hi. Um, I know it's weird meeting like this. I might not have my video up in time, up in time. Still gotta try to figure it out on my own, but um, There have been weird things happening this is since the exorcist I did the exorcist tutorial. Do you ever feel uncomfortable when you look in a dark room? Kind of like that same feeling you get when you know someone's staring at you. Yeah, this is all just a bad nightmare. But you don't know for sure until you turn around and look. Feels just like that. He just sits there. He stares at me. When I was sitting outside, I used to see him across the street. He seemed to get progressively closer. It was inside. I sleep with the lights on. Just in case. So many of you tell me that you really want to get into SFX makeup, but you don't have the products to do it. With this look, I'm hoping to show you that you can do SFX makeup even if you're only limited to beauty makeup or very basic supplies. This whole thing was done with NYX Cosmetics, which is all beauty makeup, some basic art store supplies, and a few easy to find FX products. Okay, so there's quite a lot to do for this and most of it actually happens off my face before the actual makeup application, starting with the sculpt. This is a more advanced tutorial, but it can be done in different ways to fit whatever level you're comfortable with. I'll be listing tips for more beginner levels on the screen, so keep an eye out for those. You don't necessarily have to use a life cast, but I'm sculpting on a life cast of my face with a non-drying clay. First by just laying down the general framework of the shape. I knew I'd be making a monster with big teeth, so I quickly sculpted out a few and I plugged them in to check the size of the mouth along the way. I added some details like the creasing around the eyes and the corners of the mouth, but you don't want to do too many small details or skin texture unless you're making a full mold of this, which I'm not. I'll be making the prosthetic straight from this sculpt using layers of latex, so the fine details won't be picked up anyway, which is why I'm leaving it to simple shapes and big details. When I was happy with that, I sculpted several different sizes of teeth out of a lightweight white clay that will be used in the actual makeup application, and I checked to make sure they'd fit into their little uh, gum holes. Gum holes, ew. And here's the finished sculpt that we'll be making the prosthetic out of. Part one down. To prepare the sculpt, I'm generously powdering it all over with NYX's green color correcting powder. You don't have to use a color correcting powder, it's just the one that I had closest to me, but their translucent powder or any other color will do. Then to make the actual prosthetic is pretty simple this way. Apply several thin coats of liquid latex all over. Normally you might only want to do about 4-5 to five coats for a small piece, but since this is almost the entire face and it has some large protruding areas like the chin, I want to make it extra thick so that it stands up on its own after it's been peeled off. So I did about 8 layers instead. Make sure every little spot gets covered with latex, including those attractive gum holes, the inside of the nose, and the cracks around the eyes. I covered the eye sockets and the inside of the mouth too so I can cut them out where I want to later. Next, I'm saturating unrolled cotton balls in liquid latex and then laying them sporadically on top of our prosthetic, pulling strands of it apart so that it's raised in some areas and the pattern is random. This step serves two purposes. First, it creates a gross skin texture and gives that detail that we couldn't put in the sculpt. 
And second, it's another way to reinforce the prosthetic to make it even stronger, again so that it stands up on its own when it's peeled off. Do this all over the face, but don't get it too close to the edges of the latex. When it's done and dry, it will look like the right side of the face. Lastly, powder it again to remove any shine. Now, you could paint this when it's on your face, but it will be much easier to do it off of your face. So that's our next step. First, I'm taking NYX's Invincible Full Coverage Foundation in the lightest shade, Porcelain, and applying that all over the prosthetic for a base color. Next, I'm taking Butter Gloss in Praline and dipping it into the eye and lip makeup remover to begin adding depth and dimension. Using makeup remover to thin down other products is a good trick when you don't have access to FX paints. This is essentially doing the same thing as using water to thin down water activated paints or using 99% alcohol to thin down alcohol activated paints. You don't necessarily need FX products to do FX makeup, you just need to get a little creative sometimes. Use more makeup remover liquid to get thinner washes of color or use less to get more opaque washes. I'm sitting this in areas like the eye creases and also in the pockets of the skin to start breaking it up. Then using the shadow whipped cream, I'm dusting that all over the raised areas of the skin to make it look more dried and gross. Using the Simply Red Lip Cream in Knockout, I'm adding irritation and discoloration around the eye sockets, either using the pencil directly and then blending it out with a brush, or applying it to a brush first. I'm using the Simply Vamp Lip Cream in Covet to do the same thing right on top. Feel free to vary your brush size to really get into the little areas or diffuse over a wider area as you see fit. I'm doing one more layer around the eye socket with a black bean jumbo pencil for the deepest point of the creases and to color in the actual eye area. Even though we're cutting out most of this later, having it already painted dark lets you avoid having to get into those tiny edges when it's on your face and it's harder to see. I'm using the shadow stripped to unevenly begin filling in the mouth area and filling in what's left with the Simply Red Lip Cream in Russian Roulette. This is just to give it a tiny bit of color. Then I decided our monster dude was looking a little too radiant with his porcelain skin. So I made a gray foundation for him by taking stripped eyeshadow again, a little clean mascara wand, and scraping it off into a dish. Then I mixed that with the Invincible foundation and voila, gray foundation. I stippled that all over with a stipple sponge and continued making lighter versions of the foundation using less stripped, more foundation, and adding in some of the whipped cream eyeshadow. I went back in with all of our dark colors to emphasize the facial features once again because it's time for a facial peel and not the kind you probably want. But very carefully and slowly start peeling this off of the sculpt. I took a full nine minutes to do this because the center of it is super thick, which is what we wanted, but there's lots of crevices that the latex will be difficult to pull out of like the eye creases and the gum holes. Use powder on a brush to dust underneath as you lift and that should help separate it a little easier. It's easiest to start at the top and work your way down to the chin for this particular prosthetic. When it's finally off, you will probably need to flip it from the inside out, but the shape should be intact if you made yours thick enough. Hooray! For a little extra padding, since the chin is so big, I'm stuffing a few cotton balls in just that area and leaving them dry. Normally you would do a latex and cotton buildup to fill in the inside, but again, because of our extra layers, we don't need to do that at all. Set that off to the side because now it's time for the bald cap. For a sexy head of hair, I'm just cutting little holes into a latex cap that I made, pulling strands of fake hair through, and gluing the ends down inside the cap with an FX adhesive. When it looks sufficiently strange, it's time to paint it. Again, to make your application process smoother and shorter. I'm using our gray foundation concoction again, all over, and then stippling lighter gray areas to break it up a little. I'm using the color correcting powder in lavender this time to bring out a little bit of the yellow in the foundation because it was looking a little too desaturated and I needed to powder it anyway so the foundation didn't transfer everywhere. Then around each uh, hair follicle, I'm doing the same kind of cotton and latex texture that we did on the face prosthetic. This will help blend the holes into the cap. When they're dry, paint them with a mix of all your skin colors from the face because we're going to have that color scheme all over the head. On to painting the teeth because they're way too pretty right now. I used the makeup remover thinning trick again with the Citron Macaron Lippy to put a light wash of yellow over each tooth. Then I used the Extreme Shine Lip Cream in Skin Tone to lightly brush a dirty discoloration over random parts of the tooth. 
Lastly, I used the red velvet butter gloss to simulate a little bit of blood staining at the top of each tooth and in some other random areas. It's best to use a fluffy brush for each one of these steps. Then when they're all done, I coated them with a clear varnish to seal in their color. It's finally time for the application. Woo! I already put in my contacts, but as you'll see, that didn't end up lasting too long. But I am so ready to put this face on my face. Let's do it. The bald cap needs to go on first. So to prepare for that, I used Redken's Moveability 05 Lightweight Defining Cream Paste to slick back my hair. I also sprayed a little bit of Quick Dry 18 Finishing Spray to stick down any remaining little hairs and because I wanted my monster to smell good. <sighs> bald cap. Stick it on your head. Tuck in your hair as best you can. Cut any excess edges, but you can leave the forehead low because your prosthetic's gonna cover it anyway. I'm using an FX adhesive around the edges to glue down the cap. With any of these adhesives, you wanna give them a minute to start drying and get tacky before you stick anything down. I'm using stripped shadow again this time to make myself into a raccoon. I'm putting this black in a much wider area than I think I need, that way at any angle I'm covered and because it's fun to look like a raccoon. I cut out my eye holes, and then I cut a slit into the mouth because, you know, it's like important to be able to breathe or stay hydrated. Then upon having increasing difficulty seeing out of these contacts, I decided it was best to glue the teeth on before the prosthetic was on my face. I applied FX adhesive to the gum hole and to the top of the tooth. I waited a minute for the adhesive to get tacky, and then I stuck the tooth in there. I'm like the anti-tooth fairy. Baby monster. Looks so goofy like this. Not scary at all. Do that until all the teeth are in. Then the contact issues came to a head, so I removed them for a while to give my eyes a break, and in the meantime, I gave myself a lovely haircut and teased my luscious locks. It's finally time for the face, okay. On my skin, I applied an FX adhesive all around the area that the prosthetic will make contact with, which is the outside edges and the mouth area. And I did the same to the inside of the prosthetic. Then simply put it on. I would normally apply a prosthetic from the center out, but this doesn't make hardly any contact with my nose, so in this case, it's easiest to just line it up and press the edges and mouth down afterwards. So the obvious thing left to do now is to bridge this gap between the face and the bald cap and to mesh it all together with a good paint job. Can you guess what we're gonna do to accomplish that? More cotton and latex, that's right. Same deal as before, just on your face now. I'm doing this over the gap and as far back as my limited peripherals will let me. If you're going out in this look, I would do this to the back of the ball cap before wearing it. I'm doing every inch of my skin that I can see from the front, including my neck. When you're looking kinda like you're bandaged up, you're good to go. As you know by now, you need to wait for latex to dry before you can paint on it, so I'm using my GHD blow dryer to speed up that process. paint, you probably guessed it, we're doing a repeat of the face pretty much. I'm stippling mixtures of our gray stripped Invincible Foundation Whipped Cream Shadow Mix, using Knockout and Russian Roulette to bring that warmth into it, and doing a patchy blend of all of it together. For some finishing touches, I'm going in with Black Bean again around the eyes just to make sure they're extra dark, and then the same for the middle of the mouth area. Then I'm using Soft Matte Lip Cream in London, Red Velvet again, and a little bit of matte lipstick in the shade Butter to give a little extra distressing to the teeth, wiping down each color with a tissue in between to desaturate them. Then I felt the need to put black eye drops in my nose, because black boogers seem pretty frightening to me. And lastly, pick any dried latex balls out of your hair because you don't want to look like a slob, obviously. This isn't really practical for anything but a photo shoot, but I made quick little cotton and latex creepy fingernails and I painted them with the gray foundation, stripped, and the citron macaron lippy. But that's the whole look. Feel free to roam the dark and terrorize closets everywhere. You can see some kind of pink shirt in the background, I don't know if that matters too. Monsters wear pink on Wednesdays. This is my entry for the second round of the NYX Face Awards for the Paranormal Activity theme. The voting you guys did last round for Timeless Beauty is the reason that I'm here doing this video right now, so thank you so much for voting us into the top 20. I literally could not have done it without you guys. If you'd like the Zombie Apocalypse to move on to the top 12, you can vote for me, Glam and Gore, on NYXFaceAwards.com between right now and July 3rd, every day, three times a day, per person, per email. All details about voting, in case you missed any, will be in the description box and comments below. 
I was so, so, so excited to hear that this was the challenge theme. So after going full glam on the last challenge, I'm so happy I got to go full gore on this one. I really hope to see you guys at the next challenge. Don't be afraid of the dark. Sweet dreams, zombies. I'm sexy and I know it. What? What's that? <laughs> you know. It's so funny, man. <laughs> 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 You wash your face every night, you scrub it really good, get rid of imperfections, make sure you get your nails done on occasion, but nothing too pointy, because boys don't like those either. Make sure you always brush your teeth, because good oral hygiene is a must to get a boyfriend. And, you know, spend a little extra money at the salon, because he wants to be able to run his fingers through your locks, you know, so. Oh, shoot. This is how you get a boyfriend. I would know. Yep. <laughs> 